it's Melvin7 here. I apologise that this review is so late, but better late than never, I suppose. I do want to cover every single game this season, and normally I would have posted it on the day. But, uh, yeah, I just got a new cat, and, uh, yeah, I was letting her settle, etc. So, yeah, it's a bit late now. Um, but the game against Brighton's tomorrow, so I thought, why not? At, at the end of the day, I want to upload everything. I know this will get barely any views, but... You know, at the end of the day. Anyhow, so against Luton, um, it was a pretty decent game, I suppose. A lot better than the Palace game. Uh, this game kind of showed how important Matic can be. I know it's only Luton, um, but yeah, he, he was very, very good in the midfield, you know, at the anchor role. And Eric Bailly, my days, Eric Bailly, please stay fit. Please. A great partner for Maguire. Obviously, I was really harsh on Lindelof last game, and um, he was shocking, but... I reckon Lindelof could be decent in this team as a replacement for Maguire. Like, when Maguire isn't fit, Lindelof can play the Maguire role alongside someone Pacey, whether that's Bailly, whether that's Tw uh, Twan Zabi when he's back, or whether it's Mengi. You know, someone who's got pace and can catch the last man one-on-ones and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's either Maguire or Lindelof. It can't be both because they're just... There's no pace between the pair. So, yeah, obviously Maguire would be first choice alongside Bailly when fit. And I think Oli all but confirmed that in his press conference, to be honest. He said he really liked the partnership of Bailly and Maguire last season, even though we only saw about 45 minutes of it before Bailly went off injured and then Maguire had, like, two collisions with his massive head. Um, but, yeah, so that was good. That was really nice to see. Um, I thought Mata played well in this game. Of course, you know, it's... I'm not saying I want Matt at the start. I'm just, you know, crediting players when uh, they deserve it. And yeah, I thought he, he worked very well with Van Der Beek in the midfield. Uh, I hope one day that we will see Pogba, Bruno and Van Der Beek in the same midfield. Obviously, that's gung-ho. Um, and I, I've just mentioned about Matic, of course, you know, as a, as a uh, you know, midfielder, as an anchor, particularly against the better teams. Well, I suppose even against Palace, we kind of needed him. So, yeah, we, we might only see that midfield sporadically but it'd be nice just to see what it can do uh, but anyhow in terms of the other players uh, Lingard he's, I, I feel really sorry for him uh, about everything that happened in his personal life over the last couple of years I think that's really affected his performances on the pitch so I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna overly hate but of course he isn't up to the standard um, of the first team or even a backup at Manchester United at the minute, really. Uh, his performance wasn't very good. Igalo, as many people have uh, pointed out, you know, he, he hit the ground running in the Europa League and uh, the couple of League Cup games that he played last season. Um, but since the lockdown, since he's came back, he has really looked like a 31-year-old striker from China. So, yeah, he, he wasn't great uh, in this game either. Um, but... We managed to get a goal, and yeah, Penchester United strike again, but I mean, nobody complained. Like, no neutral can say that's not a penalty. It's a stone waller, and at the end of the day, there was 18 penalties that we didn't get in the first round of fixtures in the Premier League, so we were the 19th penalty this season so far already, which is just ludicrous. Going to break the uh, the record again uh, this season, but anyhow, uh, Matt has slotted that away, and he deserved a goal, to be honest. As I say, Matt, I thought, played very well. And then, you know, we had a few chances here and there, but, you know, typical, we couldn't really kill the game off. So Oli decided to bring on Bruno, he brought on Greenwood and he brought on Rashford and they instantly changed the game. It really shows the lack of depth we have in this squad because, yeah, as soon as those three came on, that was it. Vibrant attacking football came back. Um, and of course, Rashford and Greenwood both got on the score sheet. Uh, Bruno was, you know, instrumental doing what he does. But uh, yeah, Rashford really needed a goal. Um, I've seen a lot of fans jumping on his back at the minute, um, you know, saying, you know, he isn't good enough, blah, blah, blah. Uh, of course he is. Of course he is. Like, you know, they forget Rashford last season for two thirds of it before he got his injury and then locked down. Of course, you can't keep calling that as an excuse now, but he's still got the talent. And maybe, you know, maybe we play him on the right and play Greenwood on the left. You know, because he seemed to do well uh, in that role today. It seemed as though he came on on the right and Greenwood was on the left, but they did interchange a lot. So I don't know, but um, yeah. Anyhow, he got the goal. It was a really nice finish into the bottom uh, right hand corner. I can't remember who actually got the assist for that one. My bad. Um, but yeah, shortly after that, Greenwood. 
Oh, no, wait, sorry. Greenwood got the assist for Rashford. There you go, yeah. And then um, he also got a goal. He looked as though he was going to score as soon as he came on and he did his traditional step-over thing. The keeper doesn't know which way he's going to shoot and he just slotted it into the bottom left with his left foot. So, yeah, it, it rounded off a very comfortable win for us and now we play Brighton twice in a row. Of course, we've got them tomorrow in the league away. And then, oh, is it Tuesday or Wednesday in uh, the Cup away? So it's going to be intriguing. They won 3-0 in the league against Newcastle. And then they beat, oh, was it Preston, I think, in the Cup uh, to obviously play us in the next round. So, you know, considering our performance against Palace, we can't take anything for granted. But because of that performance against Palace and because, no disrespect again, but it's Brighton. These are the teams you have to be beaten, especially when you want top four or title. So, yeah, uh, but especially because of the Palace performance, we cannot drop points we just cannot we need to make sure that we win this um of course there's new rumors of uh, sancho of a late bid being put in next week tellers we're trying to drive the price down to 12 million if we get sancho and we get tellers it's a decent window it, it's it's a decent window but if we only get one and that would probably be tellers so if we ended up with just tellers and van der beek it's not a great window it's it's uh, I'd probably say like a 3.5 if we get both of them. I'm not calling them bad players. I really am not. It's just we're, we're falling short. If we get all three, then I'd say it's about a 7 out of 10 for the window. Um, only centre-back, that's potentially an issue. But of course, with Mengi coming in, hopefully he can get a bit more first-team football. And then we'll monitor the Upamecano situation next season. But we'll see. If we get neither, then this window, as much as I love Van der Beek, has been a solid one like van der beek is the one um and of course we haven't managed to shift players there's rumors of roma putting another bid in for smalling um and then inter also if um Skriniar goes to spurs there's just a lot of what ifs at the minute and not a lot of actual action so you know that's just just our transfer committee at the minute isn't it but anyhow uh, yeah, th this is my belated review of Luton, but uh, obviously I'll have one tomorrow. It'll be a bit later on because uh, I've got a, a driving lesson straight after the match. So, you know, expect it probably in the, the late afternoon, but it will be on the day this time. Um, so, yeah, anyhow, hopefully you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check the new channel out, actually. I really like it. Uh, the new banner that I've got. Um, I got that commissioned for me on a website called Fiverr. But anyhow, cheers and, yeah, peace.